So you've looked around and done the math, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I could really make some money by listing my place and getting short-term guests. Maybe you've got an extra room in your home, or maybe you're looking to fill a new apartment, or maybe you're the owner of a new boutique hotel. Whichever you may be, you're now looking for the right platform to work with. Now there are a handful out there. There's Airbnb, there's Booking.com, there's Expedia, there's Agoda, and you can even put up your own website. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is my experience on being in all these different platforms. What makes one better than the other? Is it possible to be in all? Sure, but you're going to have to do it one by one because each one has its own features that make it unique and different from the other. Which should you go with? Join me today. Previously on Digging My Way Through. So what side hustle can you get started on? On my end, it was Airbnb in my condo, but that's because I just couldn't pay for it anymore through my salary yeah. alone. So I mentioned last time that I got started on hosting short-term guests via Airbnb. Now I was doing this for my Manila condominium. As I ventured forward into the Port Barton project in Palawan, I was still using Airbnb. But this time, I actually had to learn using other hosting platforms to maximize the profitability and occupancy rate of the property in Port Barton. Even though I consider myself primarily an Airbnb host, I now consider myself well-experienced and well-adept with other booking platforms. And as promised, I'll be sharing with you my experiences on the different hosting platforms. I've set different criteria on what features some actually do better than the others. And before we proceed, I just wanted to remind you to subscribe to my channel Hit the notification bell and like this video. So let's get it started. First things first, you're setting up your place for any of the mentioned booking platforms. Now, Booking.com, Expedia, and Agoda are actually more complicated in the sense that you would have to either log into a separate website or you would have to download a separate app. For Expedia, it's Partner Central. For Agoda, it's YCS, and for Booking.com, it's Pulse. Here I'm showing you the different apps that you'd have to download when you're trying to set up your place and making it available for guests. For Airbnb, you won't have to download a separate app, and you just go through your profile and select Host a Home. It's pretty much efficient because you're going to be able to find to set up your place through the same app. Okay, so now you've logged on and made your account, now you're ready to set up your home. From an end user standpoint, I'd like to compare the Airbnb user interface versus the other platforms as sort of a Mac versus PC type of environment. If you remember the popular commercials in the early 2000s on the Mac versus PC, you'd remember that while the PC was largely robust and feature rich, what set the Mac aside was its easy user interface. I make you recall those commercials now because that's pretty much a setup between Airbnb and the other booking platforms. Airbnb will make it very easy, very intuitive, taking you through the step-by-step -step process. The difference would be, I guess, Airbnb would be more user-friendly and it's easier for newbies to come into. The difference would be either Booking.com, Expedia, Goda would be the robust features. They would really work well from small boutique hotels or bigger hotels because that's what they were ultimately made for. And expect this contrast as you go along. It really depends on the need that you're, you're setting up your, your pages and homes or rooms for. From my experience, both Airbnb and Booking.com actually help you set up your page within probably 20-30 minutes. As long as you have your pictures and write-up ready, you're going to be able to set it up quite easily. Interestingly, I had an Expedia account manager contact me and set up the page for me. So that, that was quite easy as he was lifting the pictures and write-up from my other pages. Since it was somebody else doing the page for me, I ultimately had to go back and check each one and see where there might not be some fits about some details and so on and so forth. Lastly, on setting up your place, while you could upload all the information and pictures right away, there would be some delays in the verification process. For Booking.com, my page was quickly published, but the platform sets a limit up to how many bookings you can only get until you have it verified. Now, the verification process would be input the verification code that you would be getting through the mail. So I never actually got the mail that Booking.com would send. Good thing though, they gave an alternative wherein they would call you via WhatsApp and you would walk them through your property, which I did. Um, it took quite a while, but I have to admit, yeah, I had to get paused uh, for a little while on Booking.com. 
before I got fully verified. On Agoda, the verification process is a little harder as you needed to verify your bank details. The system didn't prompt me right away that I hadn't done it, so I was just kind of waiting for a few days, maybe a week or so, before I eventually found I had lacked completing this step since the process would be having to email before you could actually start hosting on the platform. So that was a little weird. I found it a little too manual, a little too out of sync. So once that was out of the way, I just I got started already. For Expedia, there was no verification process since there was an account manager that I had in place. And as consistent to this whole stage of the setting up, Airbnb actually lets you start hosting as soon as possible, like that very same day. For, so for ease of setting up, especially for beginners, Airbnb takes this one. Booking Expedia and Agoda might have more features that you might find useful, but for the purpose of you just setting it up, I would give this to Airbnb. Because of the convenience and the time that you could save on, on trying to set it up. Now that you're locked and loaded, there's just one more thing. One very crucial thing. And this is on pricing. So how do you price your rooms? Well, you could always do a search and look around and see how others around you are pricing their place. But this is a bit challenging since you'd have to find something similar to your place with the same features, the same amenities, and you'd have to decide for yourself what strategic pricing you could actually work with. On this end, Airbnb becomes advantageous again because of their dynamic pricing model. Airbnb takes the guesswork out of it, checks your area, checks your amenities, and gives you a suggested starting price. More so you can leave dynamic pricing on, then they'd automatically set your pricing depending on the demand for the season. Also, Airbnb makes it easy to do flexible pricing. What do I mean? Well, it's easier to add additional prices on specific services that you would like to offer, such as additional people, additional cleaning services, and other extra amenities that you might want to add on. A lot of Airbnb hosts have however said that Airbnb tends to undercut the market and tends to price listings much lower than they could actually be going for. Now I guess this is a strategy that Airbnb does to get a bigger share of the market but again it takes a lot of the guesswork involved in pricing your place. And another thing on pricing, Agoda, Booking, and Expedia are actually better in putting together the total pricing of your place. One of the challenges with working with Airbnb here is that it's harder to access the total price that the guests would be paying, whereas the other platforms actually give you a clearer perspective on what the guests are paying in total. For Agoda, Booking, and Expedia, the percentage taken from the total price is more clearly displayed and can easily be made more uniform. So to sum up pricing, Airbnb takes the guesswork out of it but tends to price low, while Agoda, Booking, and Expedia leave you to price it on your own but however you'd have to do the actual strategy on what the best pricing would be and again it's a little harder to see what airbnb actually charges the guests in full i think agoda booking.com and expedia do a better job of being transparent with their commissions and the total pricing that they charge to the customer So congratulations, you're up and running, and you've already hosted a few guests. Now comes the biggest question, when does my payment come in? For all intents and purposes, what I'm comparing here would be the payments that are made through the websites alone. With Agoda, Booking.com, and Expedia, you can actually charge them up front when they get to your place. With this, you collect the money and do the remittance to any of the booking platforms later on. While this is an available option, we're gonna do away with the pros and cons of that because what I've been doing is simply charging the customers and having them pay online. For Agoda and Booking.com, you actually get your payment on the 15th of the next month. Now it's currently August and all the reservations that go through this month will actually be paid on the 15th of September. Now depending on your frame of reference, your payment would happen from as little as 15 days to as long as 45 days. Yes, you heard that right. That's anywhere from 15 days to 45 days. For Airbnb and Expedia, they actually pay you right away. They pay you within three to five days after the guests stayed at your place. So it's such a big comparison. They pay you just like that. And if you're a small business owner, that actually really matters with your cash flow. At the start though, Expedia wasn't as efficient as it already is now. You would have to charge Expedia 
each time that a reservation comes in and it gets finished. It was a little bit of manual work that was a bit tedious and I found it quite redundant because they had all the records in place anyway. But looks like they, they've sorted this out and they're able to process payment as quickly as Airbnb does. So no contest in this one. Airbnb and Expedia takes this criteria. While I've so far given Airbnb the advantage of the factors that I discussed, this is actually where it starts to get interesting. While it's easy to set up with Airbnb and you get pretty much paid quickly, the three other booking platforms do bring in a sizable database. What's interesting with the other booking platforms is that they're actually backed up by two conglomerates, wherein the Priceline group is made up of Priceline, Booking, and Agoda among others, while Expedia is made up of Expedia, VRBO, HomeAway, and Hotels.com to name a few. It's actually funny, I didn't realize I was signing up to the other websites as well, so I'd sometimes get bookings from Hotels.com. And at the start, I was left scratching my head. I was like, I didn't even sign up for Hotels.com, but, but when I did my research and when I checked the reservations, it was actually Hotels.com being affiliated with Expedia that made that reservation possible. And actually, this affiliate network of these conglomerates gets your place out there you can see the extent and the reach your place is actually getting. Now, the biggest reason that I went with Booking.com and Expedia is that because the other resorts in Port Barton tended to use them and prefer them. So when we'd get guests to Port Barton, it seems that a lot of these guests would check Booking.com first and Expedia before the other platform. So despite everything that I've shared and how Airbnb is actually an easier platform to use, this is where I started using the different platforms just because of the pull that the town had as it leaned towards a certain platform. I saw for our reservations that diversifying beyond Airbnb, Booking.com really brought in the sales for Port Barton and Expedia and Agoda also gave in a strong following. A certain platform would have a stronger customer base and demographic for a certain area and you might want to consider that when you're selecting your own platform that you want to use. So on guests, the advantage of Airbnb is you would typically have guests that care for your place more because they're going to get reviewed after their stay. Because of the mutual review process, there is a tendency for guests to sometimes take care of your place better when they are Airbnb guests versus users of the other platforms. Now, as Airbnb started and continues to be a home hosting platform, there is still that tendency for guests to look for a personalized and more intimate experience with the host. So if you're starting to manage a number of rooms or a hotel that's growing, sometimes there is already a disconnect between Airbnb and your growing business because guests would be looking for that intimate experience, that personal touch. That's how Airbnb started. That soul of their brand seems to remain. And this is just another factor that you should consider. One of so again, the platforms do have different things that are going for each one of them. And it's up to you actually to match what you need from the platforms and what you could actually give. Because sometimes the disconnect on what the guests are looking for and what you could offer is really, is really the biggest factor on what platform you should go with and what represents your business the most. So you're already up and running, you have guests constantly, and it's really about you continuing your operations as smooth as possible. But problems do come up, there are hiccups along the way. So we're going to assess the platforms now in terms of their customer support. I would say that the playing field here is quite even. I think the biggest difference though would be how customer support approaches these instances quite differently. As I mentioned earlier, Airbnb is a very soulful brand. and you're often on equal footing as a guest. So if you have problems with guests, if they have dirtied or ruined your home, knock on wood, Airbnb goes out of their way to see how they can help you to go through an investigation. As long as you have enough documents in place, Airbnb would actually back you up. I think that would be the main difference, whereas the other platforms are really operating on a business level and then we're providing lodging and accommodations and then 
and they go by the mantra that the customer is always right. So in Airbnb, it's a little different. It's still part of the sharing economy. And the host in Airbnb does still carry a lot of weight, especially if you're working as a beginner and if you're offering a part of your home and maybe a home that you live in, you would carry some peace of mind that you are working with Airbnb. Going back to what I said earlier, I think it's about the guest reviews and the mutual reviews that are really important in this sense that does give importance to both the guest and the host in trying to find a happy medium when there are battles or disputes that, that are to be looked further upon. And before I forget, I think there's one more question that you have in mind. Is it really worth it to give 15% of my sales to any of these booking platforms? My quick answer for this would be yes. Unless you have great confidence in your website development skills and more so your online marketing skills, I think it's ultimately harder to maintain a site and find a database of customers that you would constantly reach out to. I'm actually surprised that a lot of hotels do this on their own, but to each his own. I think if you could do it and you can afford it, then great. But if you're a starter like me, if technical expertise is not your kind of thing, then I urge you strongly to sign up to any of the said booking platforms. If you do encounter problems, such as property damage, these platforms do help you out. So yes, yes, and yes. The 15% that you're paying the platform is well worth your while. Save yourself the trouble. So to wrap up, what hosting platform should you go with? I mentioned earlier that it really depends on where you are coming from and what service you want to give. Each of these sites do have their own strengths and weaknesses and it's just a matter of you understanding where you are in your business and if you're just getting started, I think Airbnb is the perfect way to go. But if you're starting to scale, if you're starting to build a bigger lodging and accommodation, a bigger hostel or a bigger building of a hotel, then you start graduating up to the other platforms that, that were really built for managing multiple properties at a time. So once again, thank you for joining me. I hope that this has been helpful. This is one side hustle that's close to my heart and I'd want to share more about the side hustles that you can get into. But as per working knowledge, this is something that I could really vouch for. And I hope you do find that side hustle and I hope you do find that escape from your nine to five. If you've enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the like button and please, please don't forget to subscribe. Really appreciate it. And let's do this together. Let's just keep your 9 to 5.